Okay, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is a mini lesson on planning and carrying out investigations. You can see that there's a little investigation going on right here in the box that we'll take a look at in just a second. And so as you're planning and carrying out investigations, you want to make sure that that investigation is designed to better understand a phenomena. So we always start with the phenomena, and then we identify what's an investigation that we could do that would help us better understand the phenom phenomena, and then gather some, some data that makes sense. And so you always want to address the phenomena first. What are we trying to figure out? And then the next thing you think about is, okay, what's an investigation I could do with which would help us better understand that phenomena. And so the parts of a good investigation will always begin with the purpose. We'll then talk about how to develop a directional hypothesis. And then finally, a prediction. So you're making some prediction based on how do you think uh, the results are going to come out. Um, as you plan your investigation, as you think about your investigation, there's a lot of things that you want to really think about. First one is going to be variables. So what are the controlled variables in the experiment going to be? What's our independent and what's our dependent variable? And then you also want to think about what are some safety concerns? What are some ethical concerns? Anytime we're doing an investigation as well. And then you're going to gather some data. We've already gathered some data that we'll look at in just a second. And then as you get done, you want to evaluate. Okay, now that we got even more data, let's evaluate that. So after you watch this video, you should be able to develop an investigation and evaluate the investigation based on phenomena like sugar dissolving in different solvents or exercising and how feedback loops work in the body. I'm going to start by showing you uh, at least how I would develop and evaluate an investigation based on an Alka-Seltzer rocket, and then you'll have a chance to do the same with absorbency in different paper towels. So let me clean this up and we'll get started. Okay, for the first investigation, we're going to look at a preliminary investigation that I had done. I put some Alka-Seltzer with water in one of these film canisters, and then it's time-lapse, so it's speeding it up. And then you can see after about 20 seconds, then it launches, so it creates a little rocket. And so we're going to do that again. So I'm putting the Alka-Seltzer in, let it sit a little bit of time, and then you get an explosion. And so I can even go back and look at... Um, the amount of water that's in there, and then you can see that I'm only putting in about a quarter of a, a tablet of the Alka-Seltzer. And so the first thing you want to do is do some preliminary investigations, but then we want to identify the phenomena. So let me do that. So the phenomena that I'm investigating are these Alka-Seltzer rockets. Uh, first thing I want to do is then discover a purpose or write down a purpose that I have. So the purpose that I wrote down is I was really interested when I was doing this that the time seemed to be just random and so I was interested in how much time it was going to take and then if I change the amount of Alka-Seltzer how might that affect the time. And so let me write down now a directional hypothesis and then describe the elements of that. Okay, so for my directional hypothesis, the first thing you want to do is you want to have a direction or a guess. I said as you increase the amount of Alka-Seltzer, that's the thing that I'll change, the time to launch will decrease. I can't really change that. And so a directional hypothesis means you're changing something which will move in the direction of causing something else to occur. But you can see that's only half of a good hypothesis. The second, I said, the reason that will happen is because more gas will be produced more quickly. And so this is my explanation. And that's something that a good hypothesis should have. It's always your model for how you think this thing works. Next thing I want to write down is a detailed prediction. Okay, so for the prediction, what I said is if you increase the amount of Alka-Seltzer in a rocket from one eighth of a tablet to one tablet, the time will uh, to launch will decrease. And so since it with one quarter of a tablet, it took 20 seconds, what I want to kind of do is think on either side of that, how much do I want to add? Because I don't want to waste a lot of the tablets. And so the next thing that I want to think about is I want to think about, before I get to the plan, I really want to be thinking about the variables. So the first thing that I always like to do is to write down all the variables that might change in this experiment. So let me write down some of those.
Okay, so I've written a number of different variables. Now, a couple of these we kind of have to get rid of already because we've decided that what we're going to change is the amount of alkyl seltzer. So that's going to be our independent variable. That's what you change. Our dependent variable is going to be the time it takes to launch. So that's going to be right here. And so I could change these other things. I could have an independent variable where I change the size of the container. And if I were to do that, then the amount of alkyl seltzer would have to stay the same. And so when it comes to variables, you want to decide on what are my independent variables going to be. So in this case, that's my independent variable. And then everything else, what it has to become is a controlled variable. So let me kind of define what those are actually going to be. Okay, so I've written down the control variables. So I found from the video that it's easiest to just do temperature that's around room temperature. Size of the container was 30 mils, and then I'm going to put in water that's at 15 mils. And then the type of lid, I'm just going to use a standard lid. So these are the control variables, and you want to put values there. That's going to help you when you write your plan. I also have my independent and dependent variable. That arrow represents the cause, and that goes back to my directional hypothesis. I'm changing this one thing, and I'm going to see how it affects something else. And this will lead to our data table in just a second. Um, but the last thing that you always want to think about when you're planning an experiment is we want it to be safe and we also want it to be ethical. So you want to think about uh, what are the safety or ethical concerns. A lot of times ethical might be with living material, but let me write down uh, what I think are some safety concerns. Okay, so what I wrote for safety concerns is you definitely would want to do this outside. You can see it's a rocket. So if that hit you in the face, that would be painful. Also limit resource consumption. It'd be really cool, I'm sure, to have a rocket that's massive. But if you do that, then you're just going to be wasting a lot of resources that you don't need to. And then you also want to make sure that you don't just leave this out, that you're disposing of all the materials appropriately. So once I've done that, once I've really identified what is the data that I'm going to collect in this experiment, what are my controlled variables, what are my safety and ethical concerns, then the last thing that I really do is I start to write my investigation plan. Now, when you're writing an investigation plan, you want it to be a plan that somebody, if given the material, could follow. And so you really want to be looking at your controlled variables and the data you're gathering as you do that. So let me write an example of an investigation plan. All right. So what I wrote was, uh, and a lot of this you can see is really driven by my control variables and ethical and safety concerns. Add 15 mils of room temperature to a 30 mil container, add an eighth of a tablet to the alkyl seltzer, cap invert container, start timer, stop timer when rocket launches, repeat two trials for increase in amounts of alkyl seltzer. So it shows you the amount, calculate energy to launch, and then evaluate data and design. So some of the things that I just missed were like doing it outside with goggles. Those would be something that I would probably want to include in my plan. Next thing that I want to do is I want to get a data table. Before we can ever gather data, we want to make sure we have a data table ready to go. So let me do that. Okay, so now I've got my data table, we've got Alka-Seltzer amounts, we've got time to launch, and these are going to be my trial one and trial two. Now, uh, what I would do at this point is I go do the investigation. So I don't have time to do this in the video. And so what I'm going to do is just write down the values that I got when I did this earlier.
Okay, so if we look at the data, you can see with one eighth tablet, it never ever launched. So that's kind of interesting. Um, this is my data. The next thing is at one fourth of a, a tablet, which is a lot similar to the video that we had, it was an average of 21.7 seconds. Now, one thing you wanna look at is you start to evaluate, and that's what we're doing in evaluation of the design, you wanna look at the trials. And so since trial one and trial two don't look exactly the same, in fact, they're quite a bit different in almost all of these, that means that there's something wrong in the design. So they should always be identical, and that might be really, really hard. There's so many variables, it's hard to flip it over and start the timer at the right time. But you can see here that my average, as I go through it, is decreasing over time. So as I'm increasing the amount of Alcat Seltzer, the amount of time to launch is going to be decreasing as well. And so after you're done gathering data, the last thing you wanna do is you wanna evaluate the whole thing. So as I go through this, what are some things that I think were great I think all of this purpose and prediction were good. I think my plan was good. If I were to control this, I think the biggest thing that I didn't write here as a control variable is how do I launch it in a consistent way? How do I put it in there, put the cap on and invert it? I think that's a control variable that I didn't think about. I didn't see any safety concerns, but the fact that my trials aren't identical to, the, to each other means that I'm just not controlling something. And so that's how science works. We do some preliminary investigations, we do an investigation, then we're gonna evaluate it, and then we're gonna get data that's better and better over time. So for me, I think it's really interesting here how that gap jumped quite a bit from 21 to six. And so maybe I could do something between a fourth and a, and a half of a tablet to see what's going on there. Or I could try just trying changing something else or changing my independent variable. And so that's how you plan an investigation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean all this up and then you're going to have a chance to do the same thing uh, in just a second. Okay, for the next one, we're gonna look at paper towels. So we went to the store, we bought four different types of paper towels, and you can see that they go from real cheap, that smart, just, just like a generic store brand at $1.29, all the way up to these tree-free bamboo paper towels that cost $2.99. And so the first thing we wanna do is define the phenomena purpose hypothesis. So what I'd encourage you to do is just take a moment to pause the video, come up with an investigation plan of your own. Just practice what we've already done, then unpause the video, come back, and let's see how our investigations compare. Okay, what I was interested in is just with a paper towel, uh, let's just write down the phenomena and the purpose. Okay, so for me, the phenomenon is gonna be paper towel absorbency, and what I'm wondering about is, will the more expensive paper towels be more absorbent? Now you could look at, will they be stronger? You could also look at, like, will they wear longer? Um, but I, I'm just gonna start with this, absorbency. And so the next thing I have to do is come up with a directional hypothesis and a prediction. Okay, so for my directional hypothesis, what I thought is as you increase the cost of the paper towels, the, the towels will become more absorbent. And so that's my directional part. But then my hypothesis as an explanation, and that is that people aren't gonna pay twice as much for towels if they're not twice as effective, which leads into my prediction. I predict that towels that are more than twice as expensive will be more than twice an absorbent as towels like this. And so uh, now next thing I wanna do is I want to think about what are gonna be the variables, safety and ethical concerns in my experiment.
Okay, so for me, the independent is going to be, and I kind of have that in my directional hypothesis, we're looking at paper, cowl, paper towel cost per roll, and then we're looking at how that affects absorbency. As far as control variables, uh, the, all the paper towels were a little bit different in size, and so I cut them down to the smallest paper, which is 11 inches by seven. We soak them for 20 seconds, we drip the water off for five seconds, and then we wanna make sure that we use a roll technique that's the same. You wanna limit resources and then repurpose the unused paper towels. Now again, we could have changed any of these things and they may have affected the absorbency, and so we wanna keep those as controlled variables, so we make sure that we're really looking at absorbency related to cost. Now the last thing that I wanna do is just write a plan, and then I wanna come up with a data table, so let me show you that. Okay, so now I've got a plan. We're gonna cut all the towels to the same length, surface area wise, record the initial towel mass. I found it was easier to just use towel mass since the mass of water is equal to the volume of water in grams per milliliters. Uh, then I would fold them, soak them for 20 seconds, drip them for five seconds, and then remass the paper towels. Record the mass for three trials and then repeat that for the other trials. And then when you're done, evaluate the overall design. And so this is my data table. Um, right now we can't really do this experiment together. So let me put down the results that I gathered earlier and we can talk about evaluating the design. Okay, so as I look at the data, and going back to a lot of time, you wanna go back to your hypothesis, your prediction. As I look at the data, you can see that as we got more expensive, the absorbency went up from 19.3 to 41 for the $2.25 and $2.49 brands. But then when I get to the tree free, you can see that its absorbency is about the same as the cheaper brand. And so I would say my prediction is incorrect. Uh, and one of the reasons why I think is that I'm not thinking about the overall cost. So in this amount of cost, $2.99, not only are you absorbing water, but you're also like reducing the amount of trees that are used in paper towels. And so maybe consumers are willing to pay a little bit more so that they're not damaging the environment. And so that's a way to kind of evaluate the design. Also, as I evaluate the design, I can see that all my values are pretty close. So my experimental design is pretty good. If I were to evaluate this, I think I would really wanna think about what is my true independent variable. I also would might wanna compare like non-environmentally friendly versus environmentally friendly uh, paper towels, that may be better. So now that you've learned how to do that, what I would encourage you to do is try that again. I've got some sample slides below. You could look at how sugar dissolves in different solvents, or you could even experiment on yourself and look at feedback loops inside yourself as you design an experiment. The key thing is always to figure out what phenomena are we starting with at the beginning, coming up with a hypothesis, predictions, and then also really trying to control those variables. Anytime our value deviate, it from especially a predicted value. A lot of the time, it's just because we're not controlling variables or we have to tweak our, tweak our question a little bit. So that is uh, evaluating design in science experiments and I hope that was helpful.